Hi, I'm Jim from m, m Tools and Machinery and today we're going to talk about the Festool Domino, I think it's the 500 model. So these are the two Festool Dominoes. We're not going to talk about the big one really, but just want to show you kind of the difference in size real quick and then we'll talk about this one on a future video. So the little, or the smaller Domino, this is the 7, this is the 5. The big Domino has a much, much longer bit and it can do some bigger Dominoes. It does 8, 10, 12, and 14 currently. Uh, and the, uh, the big benefit is you can just go so deep into your material. So um, log furniture, big tabletops, this would be really handy, okay? So really cool, just wanna show you the size comparison and then we're gonna talk about this one. So um, this is the Domino 500, DF500Q. I guess I should uh, premise this by saying that I'm not an expert on the use. I don't use it every day like the other guys do. Um, I sell it and I've used it several times and I really like the Domino but I definitely don't know everything. So I'm sorry if I present something incorrectly and I'm more than happy to hear from you, know, you viewers and tell us you know, how we can improve. This is the DF500. Now the new one has flaps here instead. This is the older model. I like the older model a little better. Um, those of you that have the new one, maybe you'll disagree. Uh, the older one had these little pins um, and we'll talk about those in a little bit, but the new one has flaps. Okay, the Domino. First off, it creates what's called a floating tenon, and that's what this is. So what the domino does is it cuts a mortise in both pieces. Now it's ironic, around here we, we use our wood to show customers, and then we end up getting rid of one piece or the other. But in essence, what the, the domino does is it cuts a mortise on both sides. You know, So if we were gonna attach these two, uh, of course this isn't gonna look very good because it's not designed for it. Okay, so as you can see, we need to go deeper on the one side, but essentially this is what it would do. So cool thing here is rather than doing your traditional mortise and tenon joint, uh, where you need to cut the mortise and then cut the tenon, uh, using a table saw, chisels, mortise, or whatever you're gonna do, you're just gonna save a ton of time by cutting two mortises and then putting in what's called a floating tenon, which is these. These are a Fest tool domino, right? Now you buy these from Fest, you can make your own, um, if you're gonna make a lot, it's probably cost effective. If you're not gonna make that many, just buy them. It's not cost effective. Uh, these do a great job. Festool makes two different versions. Uh, one is your regular indoor domino made of beach. And then these are your exterior made of Sippo. Now, the one thing that I tell customers around here is um, unless your, your project is really gonna be, or those joints are really gonna be exposed to the elements, I don't know that I would really worry about this most of the time. Okay, so this is a cool demonstration piece that Chris, one of our guys here made. He did a great job. Uh, this shows you all the different size holes, uh, except for on the 10, and then the different size dominoes. So um, our most common that we sell here are these two, uh, the eight and the six. And I'm gonna show you the different sizes and then that'll kind of make sense. Okay, so this is a four. You would use that for picture frames, uh, small face frames, that kind of thing. Uh, you're not going to use that very often. We sell very few of these. Um, this is a five. This, I believe, is the bit that the, fest, uh, the dominoes come with. Okay. Um, these are okay. I, like I say, we don't sell that many of them. Uh, usually we sell these two. Uh, just a little bit bigger than the four. The six and the eight, like I say, are the most common. So these are good because usually on a mortise and a tenon, um, the you want to go a third of the thickness. So the eighth on a on a three quarter inch piece of material that is like 20 millimeters, 19, 20 millimeters. So the eight kind of fits the bill there, uh, or the six. So we sell a lot of these, and this is six by 40. They also make an eight by 50, meaning that the eight would be the same length as this 10 is. This 10, ten, 10s are great. We don't sell all that many of the tens. If you're doing something thick like this, then you'll use the tens. Uh, you can you can see the different sizes here. Your let's say you're going to do a joint and it is going to be outside. Well, it's a given that one or the other sides of the joint is going to expand, um, and probably not at the same rate as the other. I mean, they'll be pretty close, but not the same. So the benefit is, what you do on one side is you do a nice tight domino like that, and then on the other side you widen the gap a little bit. So what that does is, this side has no movement, no room for movement. Um, you put glue in there and it'll, the glue will be fine. Um, but this gives you a little bit of play, okay? 
which makes it to where, uh, you know, if, if the wood moves over time, you'll be okay. It's not gonna break anything. Now, the other big thing, I don't know about you guys, but I make lots of mistakes. So there's a lot of you guys out there that can probably do it on two tight fitting joints. In fact, Chris here, he can do it, but I'm not quite that good. So for me, I like to, to do one tight and then one a little bit looser. So this is really cool on the domino. You can, you have three different settings of how much play you can have in the joint. So really, really neat. Festool's tagline is faster, easier, smarter. And the domino definitely accomplishes all that. You're smarter because this is a much stronger joint. These will beat a dowel, they'll beat a biscuit, they'll beat any of those. The only thing stronger, well, I'm sure there are other joints that are stronger, but stronger than this in your normal joints would be your mortise and tenon, which your normal mortise and tenon, which this is only slightly less strong than that. A floating mortise and tenon is super strong. So you got the smarter part. Easier, this is like a biscuit joiner to use. So you can make a really nice fancy joint that's closed. You don't have to use exterior fasteners. Um, and you can do it in the same time as a biscuit joiner, and yet it's much, much stronger. So now we're gonna kind of go over the basic parts of the domino real quick. Um, so, dust port, of course, with Festool. The domino is one that they really, really recommend that you have, that, that you have a dust collector, and they, they say you have to. Now, you can do it without, but it won't be good for the machine, the joint won't be as good, and you're gonna have to blow out every one. It really, really sucks. So you want to put it, put on a dust collector, and the dust collection is awesome. And you'll see here in a minute when we when we hook it up. Okay, so dust port, your cord, of course, the plug it cord from Fess. Here's your power switch, and it locks on. So you need to be aware of that and be careful. You know, um, that you don't put your hands there when the when the machine's on. This is the other important one. So remember when we were talking about the board. There's different lengths that you can set the hole to cut, or the bit to cut, right? So that's what this does. You'll notice that the pictures match what you do, right? Okay, so no gap, no play. A little bit of play, a lot of play. So when you're setting this, you wanna always remember, only set it when the machine is running. Remember that there's gears in there that set how wide it will swing, okay? So if you set it when it's off and it just happens to grab a gear the wrong way, you can shear the gears. This determines the depth of the bit cut, okay? This determines direction this way. So what you would do is you determine how deep you needed to be um, by these numbers. And this is actual depth, okay? So 12 millimeters, this is gonna go 12 millimeters in. So um, at 15, 20, 25, 28, and so on, right? Uh, unfortunately, there's only those settings. There's no variability in it. This one is actually telling you the thickness of the board that you're gonna go into half of. So this would mean that you're gonna go in the middle of a 40 millimeter thick board, okay? So this is actual depth. This is the thickness of the piece you're cutting into, okay? And, and again, I'm sorry if that makes it complicated. So this is your infinite variable scale. This tells you the actual height of the bit, okay? Um, so uh, the zero, when you, put, when you put it down to zero, you end up being about two millimeters, maybe three millimeters from the top of the bit, okay? When you put it up to 30, I just measured it and it's not quite 30, it's like 29 millimeters, but from the top of the bit to the, to the bottom of the plate, okay? So th that's really cool, a really good feature. Um, the average Joe, I mean, I guess, I don't know, maybe you'll use it a lot, but most of the time you're just kind of going to eyeball it. And so long as you keep your setting the same, you're okay. Um, so let's say the reason you would use that, this would just be to set it in the middle of a board. You know, let's say you wanted to be, you know what, this is a great example, actually. If you had to, I mean, there's other ways to set it up, but let's say I was going to do a piece of furniture and I wanted to have a quarter inch reveal, right? Well, as you can see, the back side has a lot more than that. Well, if I wanted to, I could measure where I wanted the, the domino to be and then set it on here from one direction or other of the board, right? So, you know, I measure and I decided from this side, from the top, it's gonna be, you know, five millimeters up. So I'd bring this down to five and then I'm gonna lock it in place. Right? Okay. Now, those of you that use a biscuit joiner a lot, you'll notice that a lot of this functionality is exactly the same. And that's the point. 
uh, it makes it really fast and easy, easy to know how to use. Okay. Okay. So that tells us the setting, the depth of the plate. Okay. This is how you would set, move the plate forward or back. Now the cool thing is you can see these detents right here. Um, that will set it at you know whatever degree, right? So that's at 30 degrees. This is at 45 degrees. Anyway, they've got different settings. That that one's at actually at 30. If you guys look, I think it's like 23 degrees right there. And then this one's at seven. That one's not at 70 either. Anyway, so we would need to analyze that and figure out what was going on there. The one, important one for us would be this one at 45. Okay, so 90 and 45. You know, the, most of the time you'll be using those, okay? So and then you just lock it down right there, right? Now this comes into play here in a minute when I show you some accessories. So you got your plug it cord, and then I always recommend to everybody to buy the set. Don't just buy the tool unless you're replacing an old one so you already have the set. So these right here, these wings are really cool, really handy. So let's say you're putting together a tabletop, okay? If I'm doing this little piece and I am only, and I'm only, you know, what, three quarters of an inch away from it, from each other, it doesn't really matter. It won't hurt me. It's only like five dominoes. It's not that expensive, not that big of a deal. But if I'm doing a tabletop, I don't want to be three quarters of an inch away. I want to be able to get some distance. So I'm going to put a domino once every six inches or once every eight inches. That's where these come in. So you get two in the package, right? And you just, actually we don't even need that down for this. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, gonna have the little knobs pointing forward, or not the knobs, that's back here. These little indent pieces pointing forward. I'm gonna push that on there and lock it down, okay? Same thing on the other side. Okay, so now if you notice there's little measurements on here and this the fest has this little the little V right there. Well it actually kind of works on like a gear. Okay, so you can hear that as I'm going. So what you do is let's say I want it to be 150 millimeters away from the center line of the bit. I would set that on this side, it's already set on this side. And then when I'm going along my big tabletop. This will have to work for now, it's not optimal, but what I would do first, and this is up to you, you can do it different ways, but if, for me, I would go in right here to the edge, of course this is broken, but I think you get the gist. Right here to the edge, and I put my first domino in right there, and you can see the little, in fact we'll have to talk about that, you can see the little notch right there. And then I would go into that hole. So now I'm 150 millimeters would be four, six inches away. So I'd, this would hold into the hole. The detent holds in the hole right there. And that's your reference. Okay, now next in our bag of goodies here, talk about the next easiest one. Okay, so this right here, we were just talking about if you were gonna go in the middle of a bookcase to attach a shelf. This is one other thing that you might use to do that. So this helps you stabilize the fess. The last thing that comes with the fess is this right here. Really cool, only negative is that it's not self-centering. So you kinda of have to set it up. But if you were gonna do a narrow piece like this, this would be like a four mil piece, you know. All right, there's your four mil in there. You would center it up on the bit and then you're gonna lock these down, okay? On segment two, we'll go into running the domino a little bit. So thanks for watching.